Last fall, the New York Times published an article titled The Elusive Future of San Francisco's Fog, detailing the city's iconic but possibly disappearing fog, also affectionately known as Carl. The article quickly circulated around the Bay Area and we found ourselves reading it too. The article made some amazing points, but we still found ourselves with so many questions. What do local residents think about Carl? How would they feel if Carl disappeared? How would tourists, artists, and scientists feel? What are the social and economic implications of Carl's disappearance? What can we do? With all of these questions, we knew we had to find the answers. My name is Kayla, what is your name? I'm Peter. I'm Amy. I'm Daniel. My name is Kathleen. I'm Kylie. I'm Rachel. My name is Chewy. Oh, hi, my name is Meredith. Okay, welcome to San Francisco. And while you've been here, have you guys um, seen any fog? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think it comes out like every day. If you live on the west side, you never see the sun. Oh yeah, <laughs> every day, basically all the time. Yeah, all yeah. day long. Oh yeah, every year, <laughs> it never misses. It is so much part of San Francisco, it's been that way for a long time. Yes. I love it when the fog creeps in on little cat feet. Carl the Fog, I mean, it's kind of San Francisco and fog go together. And yeah, everything you see, it's like the Golden Gate Bridge and fog, and without the fog, it kind of, um, you know, it's not quite the same, because that's what makes San Francisco sort of unique. I would love more of it. There's all this greenery. Yeah. The fact that it cools our city down in the morning and in the afternoon, and it just provides a beautiful, glorious sunset, yeah. right? For me, it's a negative experience. I honestly love the sun. I, uh, I'm a plant. I, I grow with the sun <laughs> and water. That's what I need. Fog. Me and the fog have beef because every time uh, I've been here, like in like Bay Area for like about like what five years now. I went oh, to school six. up here, and I've been wanting to take a really nice picture by the bridge. But every time I come here, it's always super foggy, and so I'm just like me and the fog have beef. There's no place more known for its fog than the city of San Francisco. The fog, or Carl, is a unique combination of cold marine layer and warm moist air that originates from the Pacific Ocean through a phenomenon known as advection. As the warm ocean breeze moves over a colder surface, the air is cooled to its dew point, at which the water vapor condenses into tiny water droplets suspended in the air. The temperature difference between land and sea creates a sea breeze that carries fog and low clouds from the Pacific to the Bay Area between May and August. This effect is strengthened by the geography of San Francisco, and is a major reason why San Francisco stays so cool and foggy during the summer compared to inland cities like Walnut Creek. One indicator that shows San Franciscans' relationship with fog is the fact that only 45% out of 1.8 million housing units in the city are equipped with air conditioning, compared to the national average of 92%. San Franciscans have become so reliant on the cooling characteristics of persistent fog that they have not yet factored in the idea that fog could be disappearing into city planning and building requirements. It's actually changing when plants uh, bloom, when they have their growing season, you know, because they're used to it. This is a fog adapted environment. Since 1776, when San Francisco was founded, Carl has had a reassuring presence in the Bay. Year after year, local residents could depend on Carl to keep the Bay cool, and as a result, build infrastructure around that simple fact. But in the face of climate change, this simple fact may not hold true for much longer. If you talk to the old timers, they would say it's, it was foggier before. But I have noticed, because I lived here for a really long time, that the fog seems to be less. I would say in the last like five years, the fog patterns have changed. And I noticed like kind less fog kind of coming fun. in. So less fog than, than what we usually see in higher temperatures. When we came, I, I've never been here before. It's our first trip. And I didn't know if we would be able to see the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, because the fog rolls down. But it was perfectly clear the past few days. And I, I, is that natural? I have no idea, but it didn't seem like it. Unfortunately, there's no one solution to save Carl. His disappearance is a symptom of the greatest issue facing humanity today.
climate change. Dire warning about climate change. According to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. Heat waves are longer and more intense. Extreme rains have caused deadly flash flooding across the country. And that's now forcing some Americans to pack up in search of a home safe from the impacts there of climate change. There are concerns change. that governments will reject more drastic measures to cut carbon emissions. Everyone just needs to think about what is the thing that interests me and how can I take this and, and apply it to the climate change solutions. You don't have to have a deep scientific understanding of it necessarily to make a change. So if you're really into fashion, you can kind of think about the role of fast fashion and how to minimize your footprint in that, that realm. We must have optimism of the mind, pessimism of the will. In other words, even though you know it's gonna be better in the future, it's only going to be better because you're, you're fighting the injustice, you're fighting the waste, you know, whatever it is right now. Don't stop working for it to get better. The reality is that the story of Carl is not unique. As the effects of climate change continue to worsen, the world will gradually lose more environmental phenomena that we once took for granted. Here is our solution. Humanity's ability to successfully resolve the climate crisis lies in our collective strength. In order to do this, we must focus on educating ourselves, our peers, and our communities to take action, even on an individual level. Because while one person may not be able to stop climate change, together we can. We now stand at a crossroad. Will we continue on this path, warming up our planet and destroying our environment for future generations? Or will we take action and advocate for the future of our planet? This is a choice that we've postponed for too long.